a fantastic Tree of Life project. Hey everybody, it's Mark from the Family Woodworker channel. Hey, wooden art projects seem to be some of the most popular on our channel. And this project is something you can definitely do, even with the most basic of power tools. So stick with us while we try to figure out how to do this project and create another cool piece of art for the home. Well, the first thing I did is I went out to the internet and I found some representative pictures that looked pretty cool. And I printed them on some larger paper. The one that I like is about 10 and a half inches. And I wanted to use a ton of my scrap hardwood. I had a lot of little pieces and different colors. They're gonna work out well. But if you don't happen to have that, you can head to the trusty home center with the uh, terrible elevator music and pick out a couple different wood varieties. For that matter, you could also buy just some inexpensive pine and use that as the basis for your project and maybe add a little stain to provide some color variety. And so my next step was really to cut a bunch of small curved pieces some of them with tight turns, some of them a little bit longer. Small pieces, medium pieces, long pieces. Even a couple of different S shapes that I'll wind up using later in the construction. Here's a darker piece of hardwood called African Wenge. It was really beautiful. Now, if you don't happen to have a bandsaw, that's not a problem either. Just an inexpensive jigsaw will actually get this job done. For less than 30 bucks, you can have this tool and you'll use it for a bunch of different things. So here's all our cut pieces. Actually, with the different varieties of scrap wood that I had in the bin, I got a nice little color variety here from some cherry material to some dark African wenge some oak. It's actually going to be a nice variety, but if you don't have that scrap bin, don't worry about it. Remember we talked about going to the store and just picking up an inexpensive piece of pine. You can do that and then with some wiping stain actually add some color variety to the pieces you put together. And so with a dark walnut stain and maybe a cherry hue and I like leaving some of the pieces unstained as well. I hope you don't mind if I ask that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon too. It really does help our little channel grow. To start off with, you've got to determine the size of the tree that you want to make. Now I'm going to stick to this particular drawing at about 10 and a half inches, and then I'll adjust the root and the branch structures to fit. I've had to set it up and model it a little bit to see how the pieces are going to best fit together. In fact, I even started to clamp together some small assemblies and I went back to the bandsaw to cut out a couple of these S shapes, which I think will help me make the turn from the trunk to the branches. And the best part about this is that you just play with it until it starts to look good. And before I glued anything together, of course, I just laid it out. And then when you find a pattern that looks good, you glue it, clamp it together, and then wait for it to dry so you can add on more pieces. This is a really, really easy project. For the beginning woodworker, you've got to give this a try. So we took the wax paper off the back and I think it's mostly dry. And it looks pretty cool just the way it sits. Now, you don't have to actually do anything else. The tree looks pretty cool just the way it is. So if you want to find a way to attach 
some wire or some string to the back of it, you could hang it up just like that. But I like the idea of putting it inside a wooden hoop that I'm going to make myself by cutting a round form out of the plywood you just saw, and then take some thin strips off of this piece of aspen that I had in stock. It's a very light colored, soft wood, easy to bend. And so I'm going to layer up four pieces in total on this little round form and use a couple of long hose clamps to kind of lock it all into place. And I just had to do this one layer at a time until I had my four layers all set. And now, after it all dried, it slides right off of the form, of course, with some painter's tape on the form, helps it to slide off. Now I had to do a little trimming to get it to fit, but man, this looks even better. And it is a little fragile, you have to be careful, but man, when I put this on top of the silicone mat, that blue background is just awesome. So here I thought I was gonna be done with the project, but now I wanna add some epoxy to it to fill in that blue background. Now, in order to get that done, I had to figure out a way to make this wooden hoop leak proof. And although epoxy won't stick to the silicone mat, I still had to seal it up so it wouldn't leak out of the wooden form. Now I wound up going with hot glue and some white thin plastic, although any plastic would work. And the hot glue is a little difficult to work with, so you know, don't burn yourself, but it makes a really good seal. And you know, once I knew nothing was gonna leak out of that, I mixed up some epoxy and I had this light blue mica powder. This is something you can get at any craft store and mix that up and it looks like a sky blue. Without really knowing how this thing is going to turn out, I'm pretty excited about the possibility of having that tree with this blue background inside that wooden hoop. And although I was never really planning on doing all of that work, and you don't have to, it's, this can be a simple little wooden project that you can stop after you get the tree done, but inside the hoop with a little epoxy in the background really looks just wicked awesome. And again, having to be careful, fitting it inside the hoop. But then press it down into the epoxy and it just looks ridiculous. It's beautiful. Now it takes 24 hours to cure. And so you're getting a full shot here of what it looks like. And it looks pretty cool up in the window in any room, even hanging on a wall with sort of a light paint color looks fantastic as well. Now, depending on how complex you want to make this project, again, making your own wooden hoop, this would fit inside of a, a rectangular picture frame as well. There's a lot of options you could use to make this your own. Ladies, dudes, boomers, millennials, and zoomers, man, I hope you give this project a try. Oh,